Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel where I post faith-based content every Wednesday. Lately I've been trying to read the Bible more in the morning because I just feel like it's something that's kind of been neglected. I'll read like a devotional that has like the scripture and then kind of like somebody else's interpretation, but I've really been feeling drawn lately to spend the time for myself just reading the word. And so I ended up starting in Exodus. I don't really know exactly why, that's just where I felt like God was leading me to start this new Bible study. And immediately as I started reading, I started to get a different perspective or just hear something different from God than I've ever really heard before when I was reading Exodus and it was really about Pharaoh. I never read Exodus and thought about Pharaoh's perspective or why in the book of Exodus his heart was so hard and he would let the Israelites out of Egypt. There were all type of plagues going on but he just would not release his grip and even the times that he said okay after this sign I will let your people go. He told Moses, I'll let your people go. He still just refused to. And then God checked me and was like, well, you're no different than Pharaoh. I was like, what do you mean I'm no different than Pharaoh? And I just started thinking about how there's different people that were in biblical times. There was Pharaoh who wouldn't let the people go. Eve, we're all like, why would she let herself be deceived like that and basically ruin it for all of us? It would be so easy to just do the right thing, right? And even Pharaoh, there were so many signs where God showed his presence and that he was real and it's like why wasn't that enough i was reminded of this prayer that we all know we've all said it i'm sure that god if you get me out of this i will never go back there again or i'll never do this thing again if you just get me through this this one time right and then how often do we find ourselves right back doing that thing or in that place where we said we never go as soon as we're delivered from it, right? Many of us will have the tendency to promise to change in a difficult time and then fall back into old habits. So it's easy to think, wow, I would have never done that. Like how Pharaoh had all those signs and the plague that God unleashed on Egypt. We all like to think we wouldn't have done that and we're very different, but oftentimes we have hardened hearts towards God and would have done the same thing, which is hard to admit. It even feels feels like hard to say, but I've definitely been in situations where I know God showed up and God intervened and yet I still kind of reverted back to old habits or what was comfortable or continued to do things that I just know God told me not to do. So basically I'm just going to be talking about the journey of surrender so that we don't end up with hard hearts like Pharaoh or how we've been in the past, how we can move forward from that and kind of grow and become the surrendered versions of ourselves. I think the first thing as I was reading through Exodus and having this perspective shift, the biggest thing for me was to start by being self-aware. Just admitting my own faults and like how I have that tendency to disobey God despite witnessing his tremendous power, despite witnessing literal miracles in my life and just knowing that he's there and that he's powerful. I think it's important to just have that accountability and self-awareness to be like, okay, I have this tendency to disobey or go against what God wants for me to do, even though I know his power. And so I think that's the first thing, just admitting that constant struggle that we have between faith and obedience. As I was reading Exodus, the message that I was feeling like God was directing me to was the call to surrender, to full surrender, to just releasing that right to obey our own feelings and that inner inclination to just do what we want to do. I'm going to kind of be looking at my notes. Sorry if I look down, but as I was reading Exodus, God was giving me this down this download about it. And it was just like, wow, like this is <laughs> so, a little sidetrack. I'm like, okay, this is why he wants me to read for myself because I'm getting these revelations just as I'm reading. Okay, so in Exodus chapter three, verse nine, God has this encounter with Moses and he lets him know, hey, you're going to be the one to deliver my people out of Egypt. You're going to be the one to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. So basically in verse t in verse 9, I'll read Exodus chapter 3 verse 9. God says to Moses, "And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So this is where he kind of listens to his limitations rather than listening to God. So in verse 11, he says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. Let's skip forward to Exodus chapter 4, verse 7. God is telling Moses how he is to speak to the people, how they will believe him, and... As he's telling him the instructions, 
what Moses says to God is, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. And then the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. In verse 13, here goes Moses again. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. So Moses basically begged the Lord, send somebody else. And in that moment, he believed more in his limitations and his lack of abilities and how he felt about himself more than the living God. He believed in that more than the living God. He just heard from God and had this interaction with God. He just saw him in the burning bush. He saw a sign, a wonder that could only happen by God. And he still just was like, hey, I'm slow of speech. I have these feelings, I have these limitations. Like, I don't think I can do this. And so yeah, he believed in his limitations and his feelings more than he believed in God. And so that's when God said to me, are you choosing your feelings? God and at first I thought of this as okay I must need to exercise blind obedience but it's not blind at all it's credible from signs it's validated so it's not just blind obedience it's bold obedience it's more so doing what God says even if it doesn't make sense to us even if it seems countercultural or something that might challenge you or something that you think you have limitations. For example, I know that singing is something that, like praise and worship is just a part of, something that is just how I'm supposed to serve God, how I felt called to sing on different praise and worship teams. And that's something that I do very regularly. I don't think I'm the best singer. I wish I had the voice of Whitney Houston or even a lot of people that I hear sing, even at my church, like I, Pray for a voice like that. I don't think I have the best voice, but I have a call on my life to show up in praise and worship. And so that's what I do and I love to do it. But yeah, I think that's another point that God brought to me that we have to believe more in Him than our limitations. Okay, now back to what I was originally talking about, our pattern of kind of being like Pharaoh, asking God for signs and asking to be shown signs from God and then kind of like retreating back and hesitating to obey. Just more on that point, I went back and counted how many different plagues there were in Exodus. The plague of frogs and gnats, the plague of blood. Sorry, I'm like reading these there in my Bible. These were 11 different signs. And there were times where Pharaoh would say to Moses, show me this sign and once this happens, then I will let the Israelites go. And then he did not until he eventually did. This is another part that stood out to me in chapter nine. This is before the plague of darkness and before Pharaoh losing his firstborn son. So um, this was after the plague of hail. The Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt and it was the worst storm that in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. I mean, it just ruined everything. It just took everything out. And then at this point, Pharaoh summoned in Moses and Aaron and Exodus chapter nine, verse 28, he asked them, pray to the Lord for we have had enough of thunder and hail. I will let you go and you don't have to stay any longer. Skip down to verse 33. Then Moses left Pharaoh and went out of the city. He spread out his hands towards the Lord. The thunder and hail stopped and the rain no longer poured down on the land. And then this is the part that really stood out to me. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder had stopped, he sinned again. He and his officials hardened their hearts. And that really just hit me because how many times have you had that moment? I know I've had that moment where when the rain, the hail and thunder in my life has just had, had stopped, there were just times where I felt like I've been through it, like help me out of the situation. And then I've been delivered from it. And then I end up disobeying again, doing something that I just know is not in alignment with his will for me. That's something I wrote down. I said, how many times have you begged God to stop the rain, the thunder, and the hail? And then he did, and then you sinned again. And that's where he showed me, he's like, you have been Pharaoh. You are Pharaoh in some situations of your life. And I'm talking about myself. Because the good news is we don't have to be, and we don't have to stay there, and we don't have to continue in this cycle. 
Instead, we can make a choice. We can choose to be more like Moses. We can choose to follow God and continue to do what he says. Even though Moses ended up having God use his brother Aaron, who can speak more eloquently, that even just shows that God does have that grace for us. I love that that's still part of the story, that he eventually fully surrendered, but he had that moment where he was just so human and was like, hey, please send my brother in my place. But he didn't stop there. He continued to follow on the path that God was telling him to do. And I think that's just such a powerful example of showing that, no, Moses wasn't perfect. He wasn't fully surrendered, but even in his, his unbelief, for a moment, he continued on, he pressed on. And that's just, that's powerful to me. It would not have been relatable at all or to feel tangible if he just, from the jump, was just like perfectly obedient. I don't know about you, but that's not my story. I haven't perfectly followed God and done exactly what he's wanted me to do from the very beginning and just never made a mistake, you know? It's not a flawless story and that's, that's the power of it. But how do we do this, right? And so I feel like God gave me very specific ways to go about this and i'll get right into them first thing we can do is choose god over our feelings just like the example i gave you about moses he said god i'm not a good speaker but i will still obey you he still continued to go to pharaoh time and time and time again after pharaoh's heart was hard moses still kept showing up he still kept following god and approaching pharaoh boldly and just like i shared earlier god i'm not a great singer but still sounded mean to myself. God, I'm not the best singer, but still I will obey. Still I will show up and sing in the praise team and just follow you. Those are just examples of choosing God over feelings. I shared a couple of years ago on my channel about a time that God told me to go pray with somebody in the grocery store. Like how uncomfortable, how weird, how like countercultural, right? To pray with a complete stranger in the grocery store, but God this feels weird, but I'll obey you. You told me to do it. And she ended up really needing that prayer at the time. Second way is truly believing that God is real. And what I mean by this is a lot of times, many of us will profess to believe in God and to believe in his power, but we'll kind of be living a different way or acting in a way that's as if he's not living on the inside of us, like he's not alongside of us. Part of it is just reminding yourself that he is real. I think one of the best ways that I reaffirm my belief in God is just thinking about my history with God, thinking about the times he's delivered me out of just terrible situations, out of the time where, where I was in a car accident and he literally saved me. It was like almost an out of body experience. I was on ice and my car did a full 360 and that should have ended terribly, but somehow, he got me to the other side of the road safely and I drove back home. The car ended up being totaled, but I am fine. I think it's important to go over your history with God. Think of the things he's done for you that you can't accredit to anybody else, that you just have to say, hey, God did that for me. Those times will remind you and kind of build up your belief at times when you start to get weary in your faith. That's the second way, just truly believing in God even more so than just thinking about your history with God, just reminding yourself of his power by reading the Bible. I was reading Daniel chapter three this morning about how um, when King Nebuchadnezzar, when he was ruling, he wanted people of his kingdom to bow down to an idol made out of gold. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not willing to bow down to this idol. And so they were thrown into a fire and God, was in the fire with them. He protected them. They came out of that furnace with no burns, no marks, nothing, and they did not get burned. Even the soldiers who brought them to the fire got burnt and died, but the three of them who were in the fire, God covered them. And just rereading things like that, just reminding yourself of the power of God is very reaffirming to your own faith. The third element of this, that bold obedience that I talked about earlier, just the willingness to trust in his plan and be open to boldly following him based on your history with him, based on the things that he has done for you, the things he's delivered you from, having that validation and having that be enough 
to boldly follow him. That's kind of been my reflection on Exodus as I've been reading. That's why I wanted to share it because it caused me to reflect on my own journey of, of surrender, of committing to obedience and to also ask that question to you guys you ask if you're willing to reflect on that for yourself and where you've been and how you've been navigating that yeah just let me know your thoughts if you relate to anything in the comments i would love to just talk about this more and just understand why this is the message that <laughs> this is the first message that it's kind of on my heart to share i usually don't do bible studies ever you know i share my testimonies but this was on my heart to share so yeah i would love to talk about it more in the comments and um yeah just make sure to subscribe i post faith-based content every wednesday and i will see you guys next week